Feel well enough to join me? Yeah. 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 Hey, I'm sure enough glad you happened by the other night when you did, man. The show was a close one. Yeah. Say so your name's Williams. No, I ain't Williams. That's the boss. Well, where's the dude, man? I want to leave my thanks on him. Name's JJ. Hey, what's your game, baby? <laughs> Let me put it on you this way, JJ. My game is my business. And the old man said you'd be here when he gets back. And that's what I'm here to see, too. And that's the only game I'm playing. Dick? <laughs> yeah, man, I dig. Man. I mean, don't get uptight, man. I was... Just trying to be friendly, you know. Spread a little love around and get a few answers to you. Can't blame a dude for that. Hey, why don't we save the lip service until Nate gets here, huh? Nate? Nate Williams? Ain't Nate Williams? Hey, man, I think it's, I think it's about time for me to split. Hey! You stay till Nate gets here. your trip. Fine, son. Is everything all right here? No problems, boss. The suspense is killing me. I can't wait to find out why you picked me up that night. Man, ain't nobody never cared for me before. You got a lot of guts, kid. There's never a day someone tries to hold up Tony Burden's joint. That place is guarded like Fort Knox. Yeah, I found that out the hard way. I ever expected to help me. I'm the kind of man that recognizes talent. And when I find it, I put it to work. You offering me a gig? I'm not offering you got one. Your friend got killed, didn't he? Yeah, my friend Tommy. We didn't have no bread, but nothing else we could do. We grew up together, too. And my best friend. Right in front of my eyes. Still can't believe he's dead. All we was trying to do was survive. That's what we all tried to do. You lucky you got away with just a scratch, sucker. Ain't no use in your snippling. You're still alive, ain't you? If I was Nate, you would sign a... You talk about survival, kid. Let me tell you what it takes. When you've lived out there as long as I have, then you can talk about survival. The more you know, the more you need to know. It doesn't get any easier the older you get, either. What you got the other night was just a smoke. The fire is yet to come. I'm going to do something that no one ever did for me. I'm going to give you the benefit of my experience. If you use it well, we get along. 
If you don't, you'll have to answer to me. Do you understand, mister? Yes, sir. Here, J.J., get some bread. Get yourself together, then I want to see you later, okay? Thanks. Got to be careful, baby. Hey, big man. I've been putting the squeeze on the dope, but the skag is still getting through. And I want to cut it off completely and quick. I want to put that lid on so tight, even the rats can't come up for air. What kind of crusade are you on? Tony Burton. Well, why now, man? His kind's been around a long time. There ain't no room for the both of us. And like you, I want to control my own destiny. As long as Tony is here, there's always going to be somebody telling us what to do. If we cut off the flow of the big H, Tony loses most of his control in his community. And are you going to take up where Tony left off? Hey, man. You need money to run your organization, right? And the kind of money you need, you can't get by selling a two-bit newspaper on the street corners or passing around a 10 cup at a rally. You need the kind of money my organization can give you. Hey, man, I've had offers before. I turned them down because I don't want nobody to control us. Now, the essence of our struggle is independence. And we don't like slave masters no matter what color they and are. And some of your men are no good to you, as they are. The less stag in the community, the better for you. Come on, man. Since when are you concerned about anybody besides J.J.? You pimp everything and everybody in the neighborhood. You trying to hustle me too, J.J., because if you are, man, I'm not going to stand for that shit. Look, man, I know you. I know how you make your money. You got women whoring for you. Your numbers rackets take people eating money, man, possession, stolen, trucks hijacked, welfare checks, cop. You name it, J.J., you got it. You know goddamn different from Tony. Now look, man, you're bleeding the goddamn community. And as far as I'm concerned, you're just as corrupt as he is. Look, I'm not going to justify corruption to you. It's always been here, and it always will be. What I'm rapping to you about is power, baby. I know what I am. And right or wrong, 
People look up to me because they think I am a success. I've got what they've always wanted, money. Without it, you're nothing. Money buys dignity. Poverty is a crime. Nobody asks you where you got your dollar. They ask you, do you have it? That idealistic shit don't pay your rent. I don't want to start philosophizing anyway. All I want is Tony out of here. Everything else is secondary. You're a cold motherfucker, J.J. Yeah, you tell me about it. Now, what I want... Wait a to... goddamn minute. Wait a goddamn minute, J.J. Before we go any farther, I want you to understand that any alliances between us is subject to some conditions. Speaking of alliance, Brother Naya's with us. You dealing with that doing this, man? You're killers, man. They take pride in wiping people out. That's how they make you live it. Those cats don't play. This is a war. We've got to use every weapon at our disposal. Nye and his brothers are some of the baddest warriors around. They get the job done. Now, what are your conditions? Okay, I want all dope to be destroyed. I want my men to be protected and bail out of jail if necessary. And I want you to pay all operational expenses on my headquarters and no goddamn body but me gives orders to my men. Now, if you want to work with me under those conditions, then I'm with you. As long as your men do the job that needs to be done, it's all right with me. They know the streets and the small-time pushers. We've got to keep them dry, and that's what your men can do. Now, I know who the big-time operators are, and I can keep the pressure on them. Now, between us, we ought to be able to let Tony feel the squeeze, and that's where it's at. OK, brother, let's get it on. <laughs> Part of the people. <laughs> Say, hey, Cabbage. <laughs> How's it going, Lieutenant? Okay. I'll tell JJ that you're here. Okay. JJ, the Lieutenant is here to see you. Yeah. Go up now. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> it's real sharp. <laughs> Not bad at all, considering. How long I know you, J.J.? Four years. You've done very well. You're a man of power. You know, Joe, if I had more than four dollars in my pocket, you would say I've come a long way. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Just what I said. Not as sharp as you used to be. I got a feeling you're trying to tell me something. Who is it you're working for? You take money from me, from Nate, from Tony. You take money from everybody. And don't you have no loyalties? Loyalties? <laughs> I'm loyal to myself and whoever pays me. All right. Since I've just paid you, there is something I want you to do for me. Now, I want you to tell Tony to stay out of the black community. Things are going to be a little different from now on. We're sick and tired of being exploited. And somebody has got to put a stop to it. And it looks like that somebody is going to be me. You tell Tony that for me. And you tell him that I am prepared to fight with everything I've got. Not only him, but anybody who comes in here and tries to walk over us. His power ends where he sees the first black face. You're biting off an awful lot, J.J. You sure that's the message you want me to give him? I'm positive. And being a cop, you should know that it isn't so easy for a, a white man to come in here and fuck over us without getting his brains blown out. Yeah, that's true, but does Tony know that? That's why I want you to tell him to avoid bloodshed. Okay, that's what you want. That's it. See you. Take it easy.
Oh, yeah. Yeah, send him up. Okay. Say hello to Joe. Bye, Joe. Why don't you take your clothes off and have a swim? Honey, why don't you go for a swim? Joe's not here for pleasure. Right, honey bucket. Yeah, I just came over to pick up my rent and give you a message from JJ. He said to stay the hell out of his neighborhood. He said to make sure that you understand that his neighborhood starts where the black faces start and end the same way. Just repeating what he said, Tony. So? He's prepared to fight. He's prepared to fight with what? Don't underestimate him, Tony. Since he started to take over, he's organized everything into a smooth running operation. He's got everything under his control except for the dope. He's gambling for complete power, and he may be able to do it, because we can't go into the community the way we used to. The people will back him up against us. Even the police have to watch their step in there nowadays. I don't give a damn what he's gambling for. The territory is not mine to give. I was put here to run it, and that's what I'm going to do. I've been threatened before. How does Nate stand on this? I like him, Tony, but he's getting a bit old. If we uh, put pressure on him, will that stop J.J.? Mm -hmm. J.J.'s pretty strong will, but uh, it may work. Well, we're going to have to see that it works. Go in and tell Johnny to give you your money. Mm-hmm. Entertainment here, JJ. The rumors were true. There is a beautiful lady in town. <laughs> it looks like she's going to stay for a while. Seems like the club is doing all right, JJ. It's beautiful. I really like it. I wish you a lot of success. I hope so. Sonny, will you stay here with Yvonne until I get back? J.J. and I have got to go to the office to take care of some business. Dig a little something. I heard you've been putting a lot of pressure on Tony. Yeah. I got to run him out of the neighborhood. What you'll get is nothing but a whole lot of trouble. fight you, and there'll be a lot of bloodshed. Are you willing to take that on yourself? JJ, don't let your mouth overload your ass now.
Hey, Nate. For years you stood by. Let these people come in here and do whatever they like without saying or doing anything about it. And now when I'm willing to take the risk, you're trying to stop me. After the fight Tony wants, he can have it. It's better than letting it drag on for another 30 years like you did. I don't have to listen to this. There isn't going to be any fight, because I don't want it. Well, Nate, you don't have any choice. Now, you stood by and let these people fill this community with dope from street to street until nobody is safe from it, not even our kids. And people are killing each other to get bread to buy junk to put in their arms. And who's responsible for this? Tony and his people. Some junkie almost killed me in an alley one night to get bread to buy shit to put in his arms. The night you picked me up, my best friend died because he needed junk. You know better than Tony. I'm not patting myself on the back about how great I am. I just want Tony out of here. And if it's going to take that to split us up, let it happen right here and right now. Hey, the entertainment is starting. Looks like I got here just in time. Come on, let's dig some music. Oh, yeah. Yvonne, why don't you have a seat? I'll be right with you. I had to clear something up with my bartender. Okay. I'm going home. I'm feeling tired. I'll meet you at the gym and you. Okay. You're not sick or anything, are you? No, I'm just a little tired in every respect. Okay. Hey, Cabbage, come over here. The next time you let anybody into my office without warning me first, you're fired. I didn't know you'd mind Nate's daughter, JJ. Anybody. What'd you do last night, babe? Nothing. I went to bed very early. Oh, yeah. I had to work. I'm Tony Burton. Tell Nate I'm here. Do you have an appointment, sir? He'll see me. Well, oh, just a moment. Let me see if he'll see you. Mr. Williams, there's a Mr. Burton here to see you? Yes? Uh-huh. All right. Mr. Burton, if you'll have a seat for a few moments, Mr. Williams will see you as soon as he's free. What do we owe the honor of this visit? Nate, our organizations have been getting along for a long time. But lately, things haven't been working out so well. And that's not good business. I want things back on the old footing. You've been talking and I've understood one word you've said. As far as I'm concerned, everything's the same. Not quite. My people are being harassed. We're losing our merchandise. Now, I don't say that you're directly responsible, but I understand J.J. has some part in this. You tell him to lay off. Mr. Burden, things haven't really changed. 
Your kind is still coming into my office telling me what to do. Now, I don't know what's going on out there, but I do know there's got to be a change. And maybe that's what J.J. is out there trying to do. Speaking of changes, Mr. Burton, chair. Nate, we have a vested interest in this community. Now, if you have any influence anymore, you see that we don't lose it. <laughs> vested interest. I know how much vested interest you've had over the years in this community. Remember, I've always been part of that interest. You tell that punk that I'm not going to stand by and watch him destroy what I've built up. Now, I don't want any bloodshed, but if that's what he's after, I'll give it to him. Bloodshed? You mean you come into my office? Tell me you're going to shed my blood? If I don't do what you want, you better be careful when you talk about shedding blood in this community. It might just spill over on you. If that's what you want. Goodbye, Mr. Burton. except when I have to, or my survival's at stake, then I never lose. Copping out, J.J. Nigga, you get out of my face. If you want to fight, go down and fight City Hall. That's where your problem is. You over here picking a fight with me. See you jab. I let niggas like you call me uncle. Before the meat wagon comes and scrapes him up. Nigga! Got any guts, you make a move so I can mop the floor up with your ass. Next time you fuck with me, I'll kill you. You didn't hurt him, did you? Just ring the bell, that nigga will get up fighting. It's a lucky punch, J.J. Sonny can get in the shower. I like the idea of Tony coming over with his hat in his hand to ask a favor of me, Nate Williams. Not to tell me, but to ask me. Then things begin to come clear to me when I pick you up that night. I felt you were different then. But I knew the time would come when there had to be a change. And I think the time is now. I sense your instinct for survival also, but you're going too far, Jay. This is my fight. You stay out of it. I can handle it. You take care of yourself in a vine. I've stayed alive for a long, long time, Jay. That's proof enough that I can take care of myself. <laughs> I still think that was a lucky punch, J.J. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, no, no, wait a minute, man. You take that shit to kill me. We'll let you go this time. Next time, I won't be so easy on you. You tell whoever it is you're working for not to send you back, because if they do, your ass won't be worth much. All right, move out. Take your 
different. No spare time. I can never get these goddamn keys in that lock. I think you had more than three drinks. Mm. And everything was so lovely. Anything for a beautiful lady. No problem. To say the word and I'll be here whenever you want. That was a fast one. You know, it really bugs me when you men don't expect a woman to speak her mind about what she wants. You expect women to be hiding in alleys and dodging around corners with their feelings. As soon as we're being straightforward, you get uptight. It's the same thing with my father. He can find 10 million reasons to convince me that I don't really know what I want. Now, could you tell me at what time or what age a woman is supposed to know what she wants, J.J.? I wasn't getting uptight. I was just trying to make conversation. Come on. It's too early in the morning to be getting massacred. <laughs> Gallop, <yeah. laughs> I love you. But I can't make that commitment right now. There's so many things I got to do. Things I can't tell you about. Trust me. All right. It has to be that way I can accept it. Leastways, I know you love me. Mm -hmm. You have something to look forward to. Now I know I'm not leaving this city. And don't you try and get rid of me oh. here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get the
We've got a cockroach upstairs. Let's see what we got. Let's run that shit down from the top again. I... I told you everything I know already. I want to hear it again. I heard rumors that there's a sh sh shipment coming in. From what I understand, it's a big one. How do you know? The message came down to firm up our c c connections and to make some new ones. That's why you were hanging around high school, huh? No. I was just taking a walk. It was a beautiful day. I, I don't push that stuff to the kids. I, I don't play that game. Cockroach, you're lying. Now, you've been crawling around this neighborhood for years. It's extermination time. Now, please, mister. Don't, don't, don't shoot me. I'll, I'll, I'll get out of the, the area. I, I, I'll leave the neighborhood. Now, that's one promise I'm going to make sure you keep. Now, when is that shipment coming in? I d don't know. Maybe, maybe three weeks. I don't know exactly. Are you sure they said three weeks? Mr. Honest, I don't know. If, if I hear anything, I'll c c call you and, and let you know. What makes you think you're going to live to call me? Especially if you don't tell me what I want to know. Now, when and how is that shipment coming in? Honest, mister, I t told you everything I know. Even if you kill me, I, I couldn't tell you anymore. No. I don't know anymore. You know what I'd do with the mob, fucker? Put a clan hood over his face and turn him loose. Then for sure he won't be back. He wouldn't last ten seconds out there in that shit. That's exactly what I should do. Now, cockroach. Start running. Now, what did you say was happening at JJ's? 
I went over there to see him, and I saw some militants coming out the back door. Only they weren't militants. They were J.J. and his men dressed to look like Diablo's boys. I tailed them to guess where? Diablo's headquarters. I thought those two didn't get along. That's why the squeeze is on so tight. I didn't know he had it in him. I told you not to underestimate him, Tony. These militants don't care about the dope. They just dump it anyway. See, that's the only way J.J. can keep the squeeze on all over the ghetto. Well, it's time to teach that spook the facts of life about my territory. Joe, you are working exclusively for me now. Hey, look, Tony, I don't work for anybody. Don't you ever try to put me in between you and J.J. I don't want to be caught up in any shooting. When that time comes, I become a cop again. Hey, I got a breeze. You'll go when I tell you. Now, what do you think we've been paying you all that money for, Joe? We can't have the uh, militant stockpiling guns. Something has to be done, and it's your duty to do it. When did you find that out, Tony? I didn't know they had any firearms. I mean, even one unregistered gun's illegal, right? So when you make the raid on the headquarters, you'll have justifiable cause. I couldn't do that, Tom. I just couldn't. You'll do it. And I don't want one of those black bastards to escape. You'll do what I say, Joe, because if you don't, well, I'll let you know the time and the place for the raid. Well, you can go, Joe. Tony! New Orleans calling. It's all right to pick up the package. Good. Good. Tell J.J. that Mrs. Willie Mae Brown is here. Just a minute, I'll let him know. J.J. Miss Willie Mae Brown is here to see you. Okay. Will you take a seat over there? JJ will be right with you. All righty. JJ. How are you, Mrs. Brown? So good to see you. Good seeing you. How is your husband, Mrs. Brown? Is he feeling any better yet? I'd say he's about the same. His mind is all right, but his body just ain't so good anymore. Well, if you need some money, I can give you some. Thank you, hon. But that's not all I came for. You know that I work for Judge Kendall now, don't you? Yeah. Well, when I was at work, making the beds, I heard the judge's son and his girlfriend talking out by the pool. He was talking about a big deal that's worth three and a half million dollars. And he was going to use the judge's plane to fly it in. And then she said, what, what makes you think that you're so indis, indis, indis? You mean indispensable? Right. That's the word, indispensable. <laughs> what did he say then? Well, he said, who else can move three and a half million dollars worth of dope without somebody suspecting him? Yeah, he's a shrewd. <laughs> you know, Nate has always told us to keep our ears open. You did right by coming to me, Mrs. Brown. <laughs> I'll make sure that Nate hears about it, too. Oh, thank you, Judge. You don't know how much this is appreciated. And? If I hear anything more, I'll let you know. Hello, Tony. You see it on the 6 o'clock news. Uh, no, I'm not going along. They should be leaving the station about now. Right, Tom. 
Okay, brother. Me and you. Men, they've been doing a beautiful job protecting the brothers in the street. But we've got to continue to keep the squeeze on and break the man's back. <laughs> right on, brother. We can dig it. Uh, we understand that Tony is expecting a large shipment. Now, our job is to find out when, where, and rip it off before it gets into the pusher's hands. So, brothers, I want you to keep the grapevine open, keep the squeeze on, and don't overlook anything. Now, Dick, I mean, we put an awful lot of money down in the sewer since we started. And we are talking about a lot of money on this one haul. Brother, we don't care how much money is involved. We're still going to dump that shit in the river. I mean, hey, man, these guys are hooking 13 and 14 year old young brothers and sisters. And I don't want my sister to be no junkie at 13 years old. And if there's anybody in here who does not have that same goal in mind, you're going to have to answer to me. I didn't say I was going to cop the dope and sell it. Hey, brothers, let's not get carried away here. And we'll answer that problem when we get to it. Like I said, we've been doing a fine job, and we want to continue. Now, I think we should go back and find out what we can. Right. Let's do it. At 4.40 to noon, police raided the headquarters of the Black Militant Organization at 4547 Dorchester Avenue. <laughs> <Harrow. laughs> police have been informed that a large cache of illegal arms was hidden in the building. Well, they wanted a fight. Let's see how they handle this one. It looks like they're going to have trouble for a long time. You still hold all the cards, Tony. <laughs> There's general hysteria here. From what we understand, the Avalo, the head of the militant organization, was not in the setup. house when the raid took place. A As perfect of now, setup. Two men are dead, three more are injured. There's no report as to their condition. One policeman has died, and one is injured seriously. Three more have been taken to the hospital with minor wounds. Uh, they're expecting to be released tonight. I gotta call a lawyer to get some brothers out of jail. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a commotion going on down the street there. It, it looks like, yes, it's Diablo. Let me see if I can talk to him. Here he comes now, ladies and gentlemen. Diablo, the leader of the organization. Diablo, what do you have to say about the police finding arms in your Hello. headquarters? Hello. Jay Johnson here. Guns in every house in America. Hey, let me speak with Bill. Americans have the constitutional right to protect themselves and their property. Uh, Bill. The citizen is an arm. Is a potential Some of Diablo's men were busted tonight. Anyway. I want you to go down there and straighten it out. Up the dope in the black Call me after you've taken care of it. Nothing more than a retaliation. A retaliation from home. Yeah. Okay. Nothing more to say. Talk Please to you. elaborate, Diablo. All I have to say is, we're going to continue to keep the heroin out of the black community. Naya? This is not going to deter us from our goal. Just one more question, Diablo. Strike. Yeah. 
No, it's my move, goddammit. Stop pushing me. And you back off. I can't think when you're breathing down my neck. Don't get so tight, dear. It's only a game. You win some, and you lose some. Just shut up, will you? Guard your queen. Check me. You lose again, Tony. Son of a bitch! How can a dummy like you beat me every time? Maybe you need to learn how to play the game a little better. Your offensive is very weak, Tony. I don't need any advice from a dumb bitch like you. I'm the one who won, darling. Hello. Just a minute. Okay, Charlie, go ahead. Tomorrow's birthday present is on the way. It's a very nice present. I picked it out myself. It should get there around 10 o'clock tonight by special messenger. Any problem getting what I wanted? No, it's exactly what you wanted. Good, good. Um, how's the weather in New Orleans? I'm uh, thinking about coming down for a weekend. Nice flying weather. Good, glad to hear it. Okay, Charlie, I'll call you when I'm ready to come down. Bye. See you. I don't like using an amateur to make this delivery. It's too important. A lot hinges on it. He came through before. I don't think we'll have any problems. Yeah, but if something goes wrong, it's my ass. the flight plan, the plane should be here at 10 o'clock. It's now 9.30. Judge keeps his plane here, so this is where it should be coming in. Remember, the important thing is to get that sky, okay? Let's be getting up. Get it out!
damn pig. What the hell do I pay you for? How did they know? Somebody tipped it. I want to know right now who you're working for, me or those sons of bitches. I didn't even know there was going to be a shipment. How could I tell you something I didn't know? Well, somebody faked. I came over here the minute I heard what happened at the airport. If I were a fink, would I be here? I want what's mine. This is all out war. Department's not going to stand for that, Tom. I don't give a damn about the department. I'm going to wipe him out. You think he's sitting at the nearest corner waiting for you to come and get him? He's not stupid. It's going to be awfully hard for somebody white to find J.J. in the ghetto. I'll flush him out. How? Yeah, what? Well, you got a lot of nerve calling here, J.J. What the hell do you want? The question is, Tony, what do you want? What belongs to me? You don't know anything about the law of the streets, do you, Tony? You're still saying yours. I've got it. Oh, I'm gonna blow your goddamn woolly head off. Don't bother looking for me. In my neighborhood, we can see you coming. Well, here I come, you son of a bitch. Get out of my way. Come Where are you going, Tony? Yeah, who is it? Sonny, it's me, Joe Sterling. I want to talk to Nate. It's important. Something happened at JJ. Let me in. Just a minute. What? Sonny, what is it? Sit out, sit out. Get the girl. Now, Daddy? I Daddy? want to know where J.J. is holding my shipment. What are you talking about? What shipment? I don't know anything about J.J. and his shipment. Yo, tell him what I'm talking about. Oh, what are you doing here? Who are you? What do you want? Listen, Nate. Your boy hijacked a shipment of heroin belonging to Tony here, and Tony wants it back. It's a lot of money. So if you know where J.J.'s sitting, you'd better tell him. I don't know where J.J. is. Didn't you look for him at the glove? Nate, he called me to let me know he has it. Now, he's hiding out somewhere playing a dumb game, and I want to know where he is. Daddy, what's this all about? What do you and J.J. have to do with heroin shipment? Huh? Get out! They mean business, Nate. I told you, I don't know anything about any shipment. I don't know where J.J. is. And Tony, you know better than to come over here. Get <laughs> out! time. Where's J.J.? Can't do that, Tony. Oh, no? Uh-uh. He doesn't know anything, and I'm not going to let you. <laughs> Old man, for the last time? <laughs> okay, get him up and let him see this. <laughs> Tony. Fucking nice. All right, we'll take her. We'll trade her for the shipment. Now, little girl, you better start to think where I can find JJ. Now, come on. Take him for a swim in the bathtub.
Who is it? Diablo. Are you by yourself? I got a couple brothers with me. Vaughn's going to be in bad shape when she finds out her father's dead. Knowing Tony, he has her. I'm just going to have to wait him out. Wait him out? You're sitting here telling me you're going to wait Tony out? How do you know that Yvonne will be alive when uh, you finish your waiting? Well, she's all right. As long as he thinks I've got his stuff. Remember, we're talking about $3 million. Where is it? Clint exploded last night with it. Well, what the hell do you have to bargain with? Do you have any feelings for anybody? What do you want me to do? My feelings aren't going to bring her back. You want me to call up Tony and tell him I don't have his stuff? You think he'll hand her over to us or give her up to the police? Come on, man. Pull your head together. We're fighting for survival here. Whose survival are we fighting for, J.J.? Yours? Mine? Yvonne's? Or Nate's? Sonny's? The cat's at the airport. Now what the hell are we fighting for? How do I know you weren't in it all the time for the money? You don't know. And I'm not gonna waste time trying to convince you. Turn your back on me, sucker. You got me into this shit. Yeah. This is JJ. Okay, oh, cabbage. Yeah, keep the place open. And be expecting the cops to come around about Nate. I'm transferring all your office calls to your mobile phone. Okay, talk to you later. Hey, Diablo. The problem is out there, not in here. Instead of standing around yelling at each other, we should get our heads together to go out and find Yvonne. And we got some of what we wanted. We got Tony out of here. Price was high, but we did it.
Yeah. Hello, JJ. Tony. Uh, just a second. All right, Tony, what can I do for you? Well, you know what you can do for me. I've got the girl. Tell me something I don't know. What you don't know is I'll kill her to get my property. I don't give a damn if you kill or not. You're bluffing, J.J. Call it. You want me to kill her? Tony, I understand what I have is worth $3 million on the open market. Oh, you know better than that. It'll take you a hell of a long time to get your return on the street. Give me my million dollars. Cut the bullshit. 250,000 abroad. 500,000, and it's a deal. $350,000 and the broad. Okay, Tony, small bills. Now you'll have my package intact, JJ. All of it? That's right. In front of the police station, 84th Precinct. Bring only one man, the money, and Yvonne. It'll take me 36 hours to get that much cash. Call me, Tony. I knew he'd go for my bait. We've got him in a corner. Hey, man. Hey, bro. What's happening? <laughs> What's happening, Daddy? Man, I ain't seen you in ages, man. Hey, man, you know where I can cop some scat? Shit's really scarce this time around, man. I mean, like, it's trying to find gold. Man, I mean, this town is dry. That's how we gonna keep it, bro. Say, brother, <laughs> don't talk like that. You scare me into believing you're the man. I understand you and Brother Diablo is responsible for keeping the shit so tight. You cats sitting on a bunch that you're gonna cut loose after a while for a lot of bread? If you are, you better cut me in. Because I like to be where the action is. Say, hey, bro, I don't know nothing about no action. Man, I rap to you like that. Say, hey, man, you a shy <laughs> nigga, you know that? Always wanted to keep everything to yourself. Say, hey, brother, everybody gotta live. Man, fuck you. I heard those bells. I heard those bells on that tape before. That's the bells of that church near that fancy Italian restaurant where my mother used to cook. What's the name of that place? St. Mark's, that's the church. Yeah, St. Mark's church bells. I'd recognize them in my sleep. And this is very important, because that means that we would know the neighborhood where Tony is hiding. Now let me play it for you one more time to make sure. Hey, I'm positive. That's good old St. Mark's. We, we can't afford to make a mistake. So I'm going to call somebody else and have them check. Hey, Cabbage. Hey, listen to this tape, huh? here thinks they're St. Mark's bells. Now, I want you to go over and check to make sure. Okay, talk to you later. Can't help thinking about Yvonne. Even though I didn't particularly like Nate. He kept our people enslaved by supplying them as domestics. <laughs> My mother, she thought he was something else. Nate Williams. Great black pharaoh. Does that make you Moses? Ooh. 
good mother, that cunning old man. And we had our differences, but I've got to take my hat off to him. And we have a new alliance, the maintenance of guerrilla force. What the hell are you talking about, J.J.? Domestics. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's the greatest information agency ever devised. A direct route to the power structure. That's heavy, J.J. I think they are potentially more powerful than on parades and uniforms. They're right next to the people who make the important decisions in this country. Now you show me a powerful man, and I'll show you a man with a mammy. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do it to him yet, yeah, J.J. Hey, 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 let me speak to Laurie. It's J.J. Hey, Laurie. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry to hear about that, too, but... Uh, and we're getting ready to do something about it. We need your help. Yeah? Yeah. Well, look, listen. How many domestics work in a 10-block area around St. Mark's? I don't know. Everybody, everybody. Men as well as women. Okay, when you figured it out, make a list of it. Call me back here. Okay? Oh, wait, wait, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Nate has a picture of Yvonne in his office. You run off 40 copies of that, and then call me back. Six o'clock in the morning, you just getting home, huh? Well, that means you'll be sleeping again all day today. You'll be too tired to go look for a job again today. That's right, Pop. You're right again. Uh, Danny? Danny? Who is that girl? What is it, Pop? Who is this girl? Is that all? Some girl I'm trying to find. Who is she? What difference does it make, Pop? I'm just wondering, because yesterday morning I saw some men bringing this girl in the hospital. Last night when I went back to work, some of those same men were still hanging around. I know they were racketeers, because they carried her into their private suite. You sure, Pop? You sure you saw this girl? I sure as I was mopping that floor. Pop, this is important. Can you hear the bells of St. Mark's from that hospital? Boy, you on that dope again? Your boyfriend wants to talk to you. TJ? Please come and get me. They killed Daddy and they're going to kill me. sharp and you'd be there by yourself. <laughs> 